Well, I imagine this seems out of the blue, doesn't it? Well, the realists remember my first videos back in the day, which were actually gaming reviews, believe it or not. Like, you can actually still go back and find out that I absolutely unequivocally hated the game Agony and how buggy, incomplete, and boring it actually was. Now, I do need to throw in a disclaimer. I'm not a game review channel, at least anymore. That time has come in long since past. But that said, 343 Industries has just gotten me to the point that I can't help but not throw my two cents into the ring on the absolute incompetence that I have seen. And, if you know the channel, then you know that is alive and well. I've always complained about everything. So I doubt this is going to be very long, but I have seen so many larger YouTubers talking about how 343 Industries, you know, they're doing a great job, but there's like a problem here and there. No, bro. This developing studio is a nightmare. And they need to have Halo legitimately ripped from their hands. I don't think I've seen anything quite this terrible. Now, I can hear you. Roanoke, don't you think you're being a bit hyperbolic about this? Not a chance. Perhaps. But really, this is just more of a frustration thing, seeing as this game has been destroyed over the course of a decade, and all the while, 343 is apparently getting a pass that I'm sure they can do better. Or, if only we wait a few more eons, they'll finally release Forge and Co-op. Or my favorite, Guys, 343 itself isn't to blame. We should pin it on Microsoft. How could they let their flagship IP go down like this? It's absolutely ridiculous. So now that we're actually deep into the complaining, let's start from the drop so that we have an understanding of the actual importance Halo has had for me personally and why it's just infuriating watching this D-tier studio even be allowed to develop this game any further. So let's analyze the incompetence, shall we? So I get asked this question a lot. Where did I get the idea of breaking down and discussing the biology of things in movies lately, but really video games as well? Well, way back in the ancient era of 2001 when Halo first came out, I didn't even have access to it. My middle brother had the Xbox, and being siblings, I wasn't allowed to play it. I watched him play, like, a few times, but really was only up until the truth and reconciliation. After that, I didn't want to spoil the game for myself because I knew I was going to sneak back and play it. Eventually, I would go on to play the game with my eldest brother at like 1am in the morning when we finally reached 343 Guilty Spark. Moving through the level and seeing the downed ships was just an absolute contrast that I had seen in the game up until that point. Once we moved into the underground facility, and there were really virtually nothing around, I was kind of thinking that maybe the game had glitched or something happened where it didn't spawn in the enemies correctly. Then, we hit the hallway with the splattered jackals. My interest was instantly piqued at this point. I knew I hadn't been down that hallway, and despite me always going around punching elites to the point that it would actually tank the frame rate on the Xbox, it made me wonder what happened there. Then getting to the room where the Marine firing at you made me concerned of what me and my brother were actually walking into. This buildup, this emotion associated with the game in terms of hesitance, concern, and moving around slowly because you really don't know what's around the corner, is something that has been lost in the current games as a whole since it has, you know, changed hands. But we'll get into that. Then finally we open the locked door where the Marine was caught by Chief. Moving over to Jenkins' helmet and watching the buildup to what we see actually being the Flood through the eyes of the Marine was one of the most enthralling things that I had ever seen. I thought this was just a game about killing aliens trying to wipe us out. When the flood burst through the doors as popcorn shrimp, I started thinking to myself, that's it? No, well, that's not so bad. That's until the combat forms started flooding in. I didn't know it at the time, but this would sort of be a catalyst for me, an interest in physical biology of creatures as well as the disease that would continue to affect them. My first playthrough was a mad dash to not totally get shrek by these creatures, but as I continued to play the game twice, three times, Several times, a few times a year, I began to notice the game's replayability factor was through the roof. I would shoot off the arms of the combat forms and then examine them. I would see the internal skeleton that was still intact, but the head had become completely useless. I would take pot shots at areas to figure out what worked and what different. Basically, before I knew it, I was really trying to see what made these things tick. So let's stop here for a second. Here's a game so masterfully crafted that it made me stop and think and likely had an influence in opening my mind in a way that influenced my career pathway. And not just with YouTube, but being a microbiologist, I worked in a lab identifying pathogen genomes and resistances that they had arguably because of my first interaction and it was heavily brought on by the game. Then Halo 2 dropped and take everything with the first game and just double it, literally. More things to look at in higher detail, more feelings and emotions associated with the gameplay itself. And the same could be said for Halo 3 and Reach. The point to all the rambling is these four games developed by Bungie made you feel something that had an impact on likely anyone who played them, which is arguably why they are even still remotely popular. And not just the old games, but why the new games are even remotely popular. 
I have to take a jab, but if 343 developed Halo by themselves, without Bungie's coattails to ride on, this game would have faded into non-existence after Halo 4. The campaign, which had split-screen co-op by the way, something that seems infeasible nowadays for one reason or another, was something that literally built Halo. The quirks were if you landed just right, you could survive like a 200 foot fall in a warthog, or just nade spawn an area of an elite to steal its banshee, or super bouncing, or flying across the map, or glitching a banshee into a different area in Halo 2 so you could find the scarab gun. All done with a friend next to you, this was what was I believe monumental to Halo's success. In contrast to all these things, I want you to take a look at 343's Halo. Now some of you are going to say I'm just a hater, and that's actually fine. I absolutely hate what Halo has become, and I'm so sick of watching 343 get a pass for some unknown reason. Actually, I think we do all know the reason because of the original Halos. It's like sort of watching your friend evolve into being a junkie, but you kind of still hang out with him because, you know, back in the old days he was a great guy. Now though, you wonder if it's really worth it. See, I think that's a problem with all this. Halo itself used to be really fun. It used to be a great game. You could sit down with friends, and I, this is what's so bizarre to me. It was known as a party game, yet you have these new devs saying, Oh, it's a competitive game, you guys. No, it's not. It was not supposed to be a competitive game. It was a party game. It's not in the DNA of Halo. I'm sorry. That is the most asinine thing I think I've ever heard. Like, I'm legitimately getting angry. But it, again, it used to be something besides just competitive three-lane sweat fest. And I'm just so tired of it, and I think most people are. Which is why I find the concept, again, of large YouTubers which I guess I'm supposed I am at this point, giving it a pass, like 343 telling them that everything's fine simply because we can't be mean to them, which I highly disagree. I'll be your friend. No. Oh, you're mean. Because what exactly is being mean to a company? Disagreeing with the direction that they're taking a game that you care about? Disagreeing with the horrible choices that they've made by coming out and literally saying, hey, we, you know, we did something different here, guys. We hired people that hated Halo to make Halo. Like, seriously? How exactly did you think that was going to go? Disagreeing with the narrative director Brian Reed taking Halo through just god-awful territory of Halo 4 and 5. Look me in the eye and say Halo 5 wasn't a complete dumpster fire. That was the absolute most jump-the-shark, craptacular story I have ever seen in my life. But then, after all that, I was right on the edge, right there of saying screw it. And I would go as far as to say most people were at this point. I remember after Halo 5, go take a look at the videos that were created after Halo 5 and tell me Halo wasn't almost dead. It was. Nobody's going to convince anybody else that that wasn't the case. And you know, everybody looks at rose tinted goggles like, oh, you know, considering the crap we have now, Halo 5 wasn't that bad. It was. It was that bad. Just because something is worse doesn't mean the original thing wasn't actually terrible. But I think we all know that when Halo Infinite was announced, they broke the three year cycle and this was a good thing I think to a lot of people. And that's what I would go on to think for myself. After the, again, wretched abomination that was Halo 5, they needed to fall back and regroup. And then they fired Brian Reed. And I imagine, you know, everything was kind of coming up Millhouse at this point, which, you know, it's never good that somebody gets fired. But I'm sorry, if you had two games to make it work and you can't make it work, then they need somebody else. If you hire somebody to build your house and it falls down twice, you don't hire them again to build your third house. But then we all know what happened after this point. That's when 2020 happened. And I think. Because of 2020, everybody pretty much gets a pass. I remember watching the buggy footage of Infinite thinking to myself, like, bro, please don't go with the initial release date. Which then they pushed it back, and that was great in my mind. Delaying it to 2021 seemed to be the absolute move that was understandable given the circumstances. But as information began trickling out about the game, another delay, to me, seemed rather important. They, in my mind, were trying to release a game as quickly as possible that was lacking key features that made Halo 1, 2, 3, and Reach really, really good. But even still, we're there in Halo 4 and Halo 5. It's so bizarre. In fact, actually, I remember going and commenting on a video basically about how Halo needed to be delayed again, and somebody just commented about the blue balls that they were getting and that they shouldn't push it back. But there was no co-op, there was no forge, the game still seemed buggy, but ready or not, it was gonna drop. And I think this is the problem with 343. They, sh they have shown right now that they will release a game unfinished. But then they'll go on to basically take something that's virtually finished right now in co-op. You can glitch co-op to work, but they won't release it because apparently it's not up to their standards. Forge technically works, but they won't release it because it's not up to their standards. So I'm, I'm having trouble kind of identifying why they will release a game that's not 
functional, that was broken from the drop, but then they'll go on to, you know, not release the things that are actually working. The multiplayer on day one for a beta, to me, kind of seemed pretty good. I remember playing through several matches, kind of really enjoying myself, but a few hours in, there was already a problem that I identified. Why could I not just play Slayer? I enjoy quite a few modes in Halo, but when I just want to have fun, I go with Slayer. I don't enjoy the constant sweat fest of Capture the Flag or Oddball. Sometimes, I just like to relax and smack a few people with the butt of a skewer. But no matter what I tried, which it could be user error, I could just not get into Slayer, which turned me off a bit towards the game because I couldn't play the mode that I wanted to play. I had to play whatever the multiplayer just wanted to randomly assign me in an RNG, which again, I knew if I wanted to play something, it's just a random grab bag. I had no control over it. And this made me turn towards Big Team Battle. Big Team Battle was always a blast back in the day, even if a CTA or zone control or whatever it is, I still always had a really good time. But the main reason, I had a better chance of getting Slayer. And for the first few days, everything ran great. The big team battle went down, and then it would be weeks that it would stay down. And by then, I was beginning to lose all interest in multiplayer because not only could I not play the game mode, which is so simple that I wanted to play, but the other mode that gave me a better chance of getting it, I couldn't access. A large portion of 343's game was down, and they didn't do anything. Oh, I'm sorry. They probably did do something to fix it. I don't want to be, you know, that ridiculous about it. But it was weeks. And it's just absolutely insane to me that a company that released this game, they knew how broken it was. They That's why they're having so many issues. They're not having issues because they're like, well, we have this plan and that's why we want to do it. The game is broken. So whenever they try something, they can't get it to 100% reliably work, so then they can't release it, and that's why we have absolutely nothing. They should have delayed this game, and what is it? Uh, the, the guy in South Park with the Captain Hindsight, there we go. Yeah, I guess I'm being Captain Hindsight right now, but the only reason I'm being Captain Hindsight right now is because I remember saying this needs to be delayed because it's not releasing with anything and I got blasted for it. But seeing as it was beta, I was willing to give it a pass in my mind, that is until something else began to rear its ugly head. The complete lack of content. The same handful of maps over and over and over again, it just got so boring. And with no way to make custom matches, which is freaking hilarious, and no great way to actually link up with players afterwards because Infinity decided to be the most anti-social social game in existence with its kick to menu feature after game, you couldn't really just play with a person more than once in a game to see if, you know, you might actually develop a friend to play with. Instead, it's like, okay, hope you enjoyed this random people that could have been bots, because it doesn't matter, because nobody's talking anyways. Goodbye, and you're kicked. It's the most ridiculous concept I've ever seen. But that's when Campaign dropped, which was a massive relief. The Campaign, I thought personally, despite having no ability to co-op in, was an absolute blast. I love the direction, the expansiveness, the ability to fly around the map or super bounce or screw around and you can actually hijack the pelican if you go to a certain altitude though it would self-destruct. These quirks of the game made the campaign more fun than just really the baseline and it kind of brought me back to the feeling of Halo 1 through 3 where if you found things to do, they were just there. It was just fun. It's like, oh, again, the scarab gun. How would you access that? You had to literally glitch a banshee through a tunnel and then jump in before the loading screen hit so you could fly into the skybox to pick up the scarab gun. And that was awesome to me. Those things that were outside of the baseline game are what made Halo fun. So from here I figured maybe I was just being sensitive and I needed to get over myself. The multiplayer would be fixed seeing as the campaign was obviously their main focus. Spoiler alert, no. Weeks would pass, and my Crimson Brick Spartan would stay looking the same like a bot because challenges I had to complete were basically hidden, and this was confirmed behind certain game modes that you would get less because they wanted you to buy things rather than earn them. The most absolute scummy crap I have ever seen. Anyways, you could just tell I'm not really the biggest 343 fan at this point. But I did actually eventually run across the most annoying post I've ever seen on Twitter, and that's saying a lot. Talking about, oh, you didn't unlock everything after an hour of gameplay? Tell me more. And it was talking about basically how 
in Halo, you're not going to unlock everything. And it's like, what a disingenuous statement. And this was actually right on the heels of Hidden Xperia's video covering the actual cost to unlock the entire store in Infinite, which if you haven't seen, it's a good one. You should go check it out. But basically the synopsis is it would cost you over a thousand dollars to unlock everything in the store. And that is by design. Because if you want the same shoulder pauldrons, they're behind two different paywalls. Or if you want another piece of armor in another color, you better make sure it has the right armor core because you can't use that color once it's purchased on a different one. And this to me began to solidify that 343 has completely lost the plot. Breaking down 343's views on Halo, you can find they are this. We hired people who hated Halo to make Halo, then wondered why our core audience didn't like what we made. We hired a person to write the first two Halo games, which I guess may be passable, but most people either disliked or were indifferent to the story. And this is largely due to the fact that she fundamentally changed. 343 is willing to lie in trailers and spin narratives like hunt the truth, which has nothing to do with anything in Halo 5. And then we came to the straw that broke the camel's back. Everything 343 has done up to this point has been chipping away the confidence that I had in them and that most people have in them. With so many looming issues and things to fix in a game, from a broken menu system, to no co-op or forge, to big team paddle basically being broken due to stability issues, they finally came out with a patch that removed some actual fun quirks from the campaign that did not impact the campaign in the slightest, and removing jumping areas from multiplayer maps, which apparently affected competitiveness. I ask you, 343, who are you making this game for? Because what it looks like, you're not making it for Halo fans, you are simply making it to be an eSport. So rather than the typical pathway of a game, this is how eSports usually work, is basically the game is fun first. And subsequently, it becomes an eSport as a result because people play it enough and it becomes competitive and everything's good. Well, 343 Industries has consistently shown that they're really just trying to force it into being an eSport. And much like a fart, anything that has to be forced is probably crap. I am absolutely sick of 343 Industries in the direction that they have taken. I'm tired of the constant failing and ignoring of problems in their game just to fix something that didn't even matter in the first place, like if I could hijack a pelican that would blow up if I went too high. How is that a priority? Who did you put on there to fix that that could have been fixing something else? Like, this reminds me of the episode of South Park where they're cutting the heads off chickens to fix the economy. Like, is that how you're fixing the problems of Halo? It's absolutely insanity to me. I'm just like, I'm flabbergasted. 343 needs to have Halo ripped from them immediately, and Halo needs to be fixed at a baseline first. How Microsoft can let this studio go on, just keep doing what they are doing, is beyond me. Phil came out and said that if we lose our way with Halo, we lose our way with Xbox. Well, buddy, it's about 10 years past that. The whole thing started to go awry with Halo 4. I feel like I'm screaming into the void on this one, but it's just so frustrating watching this game that had such an impact on me when I was younger become this completely different craptacular game with just a Halo skin. I mean, we may as well just call the Halo uh, pack in Minecraft as the canonical sequel at this point because it's also a Halo skin. Now, I don't want to come down on everyone here. There are those that have been working extremely hard on Halo and they are basically temps who don't really care one way or another. But whoever in their right mind decided to actually, again, hire people who hated Halo and then they bragged about it, they need to be looking for a new job. This is absolutely ludicrous. How this has been handled and developed, I seem to remember a time when people were upset about Halo 5 and the studio came out and basically said that we were all haters. No, 343, we just don't like you. Everything that you do in this game makes no sense. You fix the wrong things. You, I'm sorry, but the Microsoft, or not the Microsoft store, the store in Halo to me, while it's not predatory because it's cosmetic, it's just, you didn't want people to actually like the game, did you? You just wanted them to spend money. So I have to say, like, again, if they think we're all haters, by the way, if that's what 343 really thinks of their core audience, then why in the name of all that is holy are we defending this game and their studio? I mean, really think about that. The management has consistently and willfully made horrible decisions 
all throughout the last decade, and the only reason they haven't been dissolved as a studio is because of the goodwill the original trilogy garnered for them. What Halo is now isn't Halo in the slightest. It's a cash grab, with the store at this point being hilariously bad. There's virtually no new content coming down the pipeline at all, with Season 3 delayed to March, and that means Season 2 is going to be around for 10 months. Do they really expect a large audience to stick around? And I'm going to tell you, being on YouTube, I can say this. It doesn't matter how well you're liked if you make many consistent mistakes and then bring nothing new to the table or try to rectify anything, eventually everyone's going to forget about you. To quote Ted, which I know obscure, right? No matter how big of a splash you make in this world, whether you're Corey Feldman, Frankie Muniz, Justin Bieber, or a talking teddy bear, eventually nobody gives a shit. And that's Halo Infinite. They had an opportunity to make a great game, to revive Halo for millions of people, to get it back on track. Instead, it was decided that they should do a live service game without the live service, where everything is delayed, but you better believe that store is updated daily, as soon as it possibly can. Oh, but even with the store being updated, things like split-screen co-op that were promised are being abandoned. Forge apparently works, but still isn't being released because it's not up to 343's amazing standards like how they released Infinite to begin with. Which I find highly ironic given their complete willingness to release actually half-baked ideas and broken games. Now, it, there can be a concept, or not a concept, there can be a case made, well Microsoft pushed it, sure. Microsoft pushed it, but when you promise something to your audience, you probably need to follow through because does anybody actually trust 343 to do anything correct at this point? I'm sorry, but this is basically, I think, the nail, the final nail in the coffin for Halo. Everybody was waiting for something to revive Halo, to apparently get it back on top. It's not happening. Not with 343 at the helm. Now, and uh, again, another argument could also be made about how maybe 343 has learned a lesson about releasing broken things at this point, but I think they're just nervous because I want to bring up a point that I haven't really seen many people talk about in possibly a more skeptical light than a positive light. I find it strange how they're bringing in people who oversaw the original Halo projects. Now, the general consensus is, oh, they're bringing them in to help build Halo. Well, they brought them in, nothing changed. I know we're supposed to be jazzed about that, but again, does anybody else get the feeling that they just brought it in, brought these people in so that, like, the heat against 343 wouldn't be as elevated because to attack 343 with criticism would be to attack the same people who had a hand in developing your favorite trilogy. I mean, sure, I bet they're doing something to help again, but with this incompetence running this deep, I doubt truly much can be done. To me, Halo's officially dead. This was their last shot as a consumer, at least for me, to get it right. But after I put down that controller months ago from playing this game, I just never picked it back up. It doesn't bring me glee that this game that had such influence on me back when I was younger is down this bad. But for all those saying it deserves to be back up on top where it belongs, I ask you, again, how is that accomplished? Because with those same people defending 343 Industries, then turning around and saying this, you're missing the point. Halo itself, the concept is great, and that can be back on top. But it needs to cut the cancer off of itself, which is this developing studio 343 Industries. The management needs a shakeup. Microsoft needs to rein back in this team and put them on other projects because they don't need to touch a Halo game ever. But hey, that's just one salty boomer's opinion. Also, don't go threaten 343 anything because of this. I'm just frustrated. That's stupid to go do. We're gonna wrap this up here. Anyhow, I hope uh, that you enjoyed this because holy lord, this was awful to write. And I know it was all around, but that's just because I'm frustrated. This will be the last thing I say about Halo until 343 is dissolved because in my mind, there's no point in looking forward to anything the studio does because they've shown they'll just continue to botch it every single time. I'll drop my Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and channel links in the description. And speaking of patrons, I'd like to thank mine real quick. First, huge thank you to our two astronauts, Jonathan and Wesley A. Weaver Jr. Thank you very much, guys. I'd also like to thank our two astrophysicists, Death Dancer and Phoenix, as well as our scientist, Countryside Limbo. And to the rest of my patrons, I thank you guys as well. Your help goes a long ways towards keeping this channel running and is greatly appreciated. All right, well, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this complete complaint fest I just went through, and I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>